on Greg Cazillo from Cazillo. Com. As I mentioned in this last week's Keep Shooting Monday, which was live, so make sure you check it out. I've been doing a lot of events lately, and uh, so I needed to do some what they call memory mates. Now, back in the day, a memory mate used to be this little cardboard thing with like a cardboard kind of a folder, kind of a quote-unquote frame with an embossed logo on it, and then you would slide in the 5x7 of the group, and you would slide in the 4x5 of the individual. Well, over the last few years, what's become popular is printing all that on a single image with some kind of a cool background. And so I wanted to take this and do it all within Lightroom because I wanted to make it easier, wanted my workflow to be a little bit easier, and I didn't want to have to write a script within Photoshop in order to do it just for 25 images. So this ended up being a lot easier. Now, I've actually done this already for the Little League that I just photographed not that long ago, but um, didn't want to put those photos, didn't want to show those photos, figured I would show these instead. Now, these photos were from a rally that I photographed this past weekend, and uh, so this is the background image that I chose, and uh, as you see, this photo right here, I desaturated the background uh, in Photoshop and then added a logo. Now I'm going to go over here to the print module and uh, let's make this little memory mate. And first thing that I'm going to choose is an identity plate. And it seems like an odd thing to choose instead of background uh, color, quote unquote, but it's only allowed me to choose a color there. So I'm going to hit edit here and then I'm going to make my own memory mate. I'm going to choose use graphical and I'm going to locate my file which is going to take me a second. <laughs> All my files are everywhere. Uh, let's see. There, there, there. And then that's the one. It's going to give me a little warning here about the size. I'm going to use it anyway. And I'm going to click OK. Now, I've already chosen my paper size and my image size to be 8 by 10 as is my image. And so that works out nicely. Now, I don't want my opacity to be lowered because I've already lowered the opacity of the background image because I want my logo to be solid. Then I can just add a couple of images. And so let's add that one. And that's my horizontal there. And then let's add one more five by seven, which shouldn't have done that. Oh, I know why I did that. Okay, because of the sizing. Okay, it did that because it didn't think that the two images were going to fit on the page because of the placement, and that's why it pushed it over onto that second page. So um, let's move this down here a little bit more, and then it's as easy as dragging and dropping all of my images into the spot, and I'm done. Then from here, if I wanted to send it out to a lab to be printed, I can just go to print job down here and then choose JPEG file. Make sure you're sharpening it. I would increase the resolution a bit just to make it a little bit bigger file or even give it custom dimensions one or the other so that you have a decent sized file since you're probably going to be printing 8x10 or maybe even a little bit longer. And uh, print adjustment, you don't need that. Color management, you definitely want the profile to be sRGB and you don't want draft mode, and then you would just hit print to file, and let's send it over to the desktop, and we'll call it one, save, and we'll go over to our desktop again, and there's our photo, all done with the images in it. Now one more thing to make it even a little bit nicer, which we can do, is if we come back up here to our cells, we can, oops, nope, I guess it's not in cells. We can guide rulers, page. There, I know there's a way in here. <laughs> Just bear with me here while I find it. There it is, uh, photo border. We can add a little bit of a black border, say a three pixel uh, border. And uh, well, this one is w showing up as white, but I know that we can change that color. So let's make it black instead as an inner and um, make it one point. There we go. So now we have a little bit of a black border on each photo just to separate it a little bit. 
and that makes it that much nicer. So one, two, three, here is the other one. There it is, now we have that nice black border, it matches the logo. Now this is just a really quick one that I put together. This is not something that would be 100% by any means. I would definitely play with it. Maybe I'd want to crop this group image, do something with it, maybe crop it and put it along the bottom, but you get the point. The entire thing is here, it's done within Lightroom, and then I can go back and into Lightroom and I can very easily just replace this image with say I had a group of like 10 or 15 of these that I wanted to do and then I could just do that quick export that's gonna be a lot quicker when you have a small amount say 20 25 rather than writing a, a full uh, script within Photoshop and uh, you know running it through a bridge and then da, 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 and exporting all the individual files this is done and you can just export it and that's it so uh, questions or anything, I think this was a really neat way to do it, and I hope you were able to do it yourself. Greg Cazillo, Cazillo.com. Thanks, guys. Keep shooting.